AEW World Title Match. MJF, Kenny Omega. This was the old Kenny. And this was an MJF that we have not seen. Uh, he has just worked so hard at his craft. We're going to talk about the match again when we come back from break. But I, I was so happy for the two of them. Because they put on the match that everybody wanted to see. This is what made AEW a success, is matches like this, world title matches like this on TV, the importance of the match, the importance of storytelling in the match. This match was fantastic. MJF, Kenny Omega. This was the, the Kenny that we know. This is a very different Max. Uh, they went toe-to-toe. To -to -toe. Max did crazy stuff in this, in this match. Uh, Kenny... The big story was, you know, Kenny kept going for the one-winged angel, couldn't get it on him. Uh, what did you think of this, MJ? I This was amazing. There was so many times I was like, there was a th almost three count. I was like, and the counter-wrestling was, a, the countering was what really made this match for me. And then MJF doing a Fosbury flop. Like, he did a Fosbury out flop, Out of nowhere. Yeah. On the Omega outside, I was like, "Where did that?" I mean, come he from? did. He did go. He, still... he did awfully go. He he did at a forty-five degree angle, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but the way he did it, I'm like, he just showed a different range that you don't see out of him. It was yeah. awesome. You, just, you know, everybody so thought ways. Everybody thought that Kenny came out in uh in Bret Hart cosplay, right? Because he was on Collision. This is the Bret Hart show. <laughs> But it wasn't Bret Hart cosplay. It was a it was a character, right? It was an anime character. Yeah, yeah, it's an anime. I don't know which one it is. I'm not up on that stuff, but mm. uh, I it definitely was. You know, Kenny looked so good here. Uh, there were so many moments in this match that really stood out. You know, one of the best TV matches that they've done, maybe ever. I mean, I, was this better know, than the Danielson? Was this better than the Danielson Omega at Arthur Ashe the first time? Uh, that's a good question. That was a that thirty one minute was at draw. The beginning of the show, yeah. That one was at the beginning of the show, though. So yeah, I, I don't know. This just stands out more because it was the main event, and maybe maybe it's recency bias too. But man, they just they lay, they laid it all out there, and I felt like there was two ways you could go with this match. One was what they did, just just a banger, or they have a schmoz finish and set something else. And up. they didn't there do that no in between. Yeah. Mm. There was no schmoz um, at the end. They they really they nope. really it was a clean except for Don ending. Callis. Callis except came out and they made everybody in. think it was you know that that was and right, that was right. the swerve there right mm -hmm. you you thought everybody watching and you know that's the psychology it's of like, pro wrestling. Oh no, right. You're watching yeah. this and everybody already has assumed well you can't beat Max and you can't beat right. Kenny, so there's going to be something that happens. Somebody's running in, and Callis came in. It didn't affect the match really. And Kenny still lost, but you could still in the back of your head be like, well, maybe he got a little distracted from Callis. You know, everybody looked great here. Um, that there was a there was a spot that uh, that Max did where Kenny went up for uh, like a like a stand up hurricanrana, right? And mm -hmm. Max did a power bomb on his knee, and I was like, man, you know, these are these are moves that I've never seen him do. I've seen Max wrestle on the independence since he started in Long Island. Okay. I called one of his matches. I was terrible at it. I'll never do it again. It's not my forte. But it was just, I saw this guy out there at 20, early 20s. Maybe, I don't even know, like 2017, you know? Early Max. Nobody was talking. I saw him come out with that Burberry, Burberry uh, uh, scarf. And I'm like, man, you know what? What a character. And all I could see was Piper. This guy is totally evolved into his own. Uh, fantastic stuff. I absolutely loved it. I love this match. Uh, Five-star match. Yeah, I give it five stars. I, I found nothing wrong with this, and it helped Max further solidify that he's a real deal world heavyweight champion. There was something on the line here, and that was Kenny's streak as the longest reigning AEW world heavyweight champion, and now Max is looking to pass that, which he will. But here's the story. Everybody is gunning for that title now. You got Kenny. You got, uh, 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 Ju uh, I'm sorry, uh, Jay White. You got Wardlow in the back. 
right? You have um, uh, Samoa Joe, Joe, Samoa Joe, mm -hmm. and then whoever else. I think the story should be that he 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 got exhausted because he had nobody. And it was just one big challenger after another. And when you beat him finally, the story's going to be that this dude, like, he, it, he got worn out. He wrestled the best of the best until somebody knocked him off. I think there's a good story there. Whether or not they go that direction, whether or not they're telling that story. And I think, you know, part of that story is going to take place at the Nassau Coliseum December 30th. That's the big part here. Loved it, though. Great collision. They got to keep doing shows like this.